The Minister of Police Affairs, Mohammed Dangiadi, has said 10,000 constables will be recruited yearly into the Nigerian police force. Concerning the face-off between the Nigerian police force and the police service commission, the minister said that there is nothing serious about it, and I quote, we don't need to tell anybody what we are doing, but the situation is under control by the grace of God. He also stated that he was aware of the poor state of barracks and absence of modern equipment and proper welfare package for police personnel. And that the Nigerian Trust Fund bill, assented by, to by the president, will help solve these vices. Joining me, or rather still with me in the studio, are two gentlemen. Uh, we have Dikbo Olayoko, thank you very much. You're welcome. And of course, we have uh, Biodun Shomi, thank you for staying with us. Please Your thoughts? <clears throat> I'll start with you this time. Nigerian Police Force. 10,000 constables <clears throat> yearly. The question is for how many years? We need to understand the fact that the Nigerian Police Force, that is, if we want to put the force there, is uh, grossly understaffed. I think in now we have less than 350,000 policemen for a country as big as this, and then for a population of 200. I, I think the United Nations says uh, one police to 600 people. Uh, or 1, no, one, to, one, one policeman to 450. To 450, uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then you can just look at the ratio. Let's, let us assume 350,000, because in the past few years they have been recruiting. And apart from the failure on the part of personnel, we also have failure on the part of technology. In other countries, apart from using the personnel, which is secondary, we, they use technology more often than not to police their environment. In that area, we have, we are inadequate. So that is why we have these problems. And even the 350,000 that we have, how many of them are deployed to do police work? I almost, if I want to be conservative, maybe, uh, maybe about 20%, let us just 20% or 30% are deployed to political okay. office holders, their wives, their girlfriends, then be big guys in the country that want to travel, they have policemen attached to them. So if you look at the exact policemen that we have to do the real police work in the country, I don't think they are up to 250. So if the government says they want to recruit, all well and good. But the point is, the one we have already, are they properly equipped one? What about skill acquisition? That is in the area of training. Those are the areas we need to look into. That even the, with the numbers that we have, if we have the proper training, and let us, the training we are talking about is, before you join the police, you are sent to a place where you are trained as to how you to do your work. The environment where they were trained, what does it look like? And then the man finishes training, he goes into the police work. The environment where he lives, that is those who are lucky enough to get accommodation within the barracks. Have you ever, you, be, you get to the barracks. So you look at the, the stages of development of a policeman. Or does not give, do not give him the prerequisites to be a good policeman. So those are the areas that we are looking at. Yes, it is good to have the personnel, to beef up the personnel with greatly inadequate, as we have said. Maybe, and unfortunately, Every IG that comes into office, one of the very, it's like they have already prepared speech that they give to them when you are coming into office. What they only do is to change the name of the person and then change the date. They call, is... All these things contain things like, I'm going to stop police checkpoints. That is another thing that is taking the police personnel out of their duty. I am going to stop unauthorized person getting police escort. It, all those things are contained. But you wake up every day, you see these guys accompany or follow unauthorized persons. So those are the things. Because the essence of appointing or recruiting 10,000 people is just to make sure that they pay up their numbers so that they'll be able to discharge their responsibilities. There are things that are more than that for them to perform. Okay, still the recruitment. We know that there is a controversy in the current exercise, which is still on, which is um, ongoing at the moment. And we also know there is a face-off between the commission and the police uh, force. That, to quote what the Minister of Police Affairs said, uh, he, when asked about this, what he said was, maybe people are overblowing it. There is nothing serious about it. Uh, it says uh, it is an interim misunderstanding, and this we are trying to manage. That is what he said. Uh, his comments imply the situation is yet to be resolved. So in the middle of this, how will we do effective recruitment if this issue is not resolved? And from all indication, it has not been resolved. 
Yeah, what it clearly shows is that there is no synergy between the police force and the police service commission. There's a disconnect somewhere. Tough, tough war, actually. Yes, at the top leadership level, there's a disconnect somewhere. Uh, one is against what the other is trying to do or think uh, is their responsibility. <clears throat> Irrespective of what the law that created um, the Police Service Commission you know, states. Uh, but when you look at the issue of recruitment of um, police officers, at times I laugh when we embark on this um, thing. Mean. It's exactly what we did with education that we're trying to do, which is um, you allow creation of so many universities, but they are not equipped. They're not well equipped. You can't properly cater for their salary. They are not mobile enough. They don't carry out research, uh, no research grant, nothing. And then, uh, then you then claim you have so many universities. What they're trying to do with the Nigerian police force, people should ask questions. Nigeria is highly under police, like Depo said. We have the UN recommends one to 450. In Nigeria, if you take away those who are on VIP duties, that is those who have privatized the Nigerian police force funded by public um, uh, money, uh, you realize that the ratio is almost, some people said 1 to 550 now. If you take it away and take away those doing paperwork, it's like 1 to 750. Uh, that is what we have. It shows that we are highly under-policed for a country of 200 million. Now, the problem is this. The existing police officers go to so many states. Who is buying the boots, the uniform? the guns, why do you have RRS? Why do you have, in Ogun State, they have their own, uh, something similar Q, to RRS? Q, Q, QRS. QRS. In so many states of the Federation like that, and you see governors spending money they need to use to do roads, fund hospitals, you know, equip hospitals, equip schools, you know, to provide guns, bullets, you know, for Nigerian police officers, which have been budgeted for at the center, to start with. Every year we have this budget. What happens to that budget? So the existing police officers are ill-equipped, even with weapons to combat crime. In terms of technology, it's almost zero. The forensic science capacity of the Nigerian police force is very, very low, extremely low. Apart from the one in Lagos, I don't know which other one is in Lagos. How would they cope with the level of crimes in Lagos? So we have so many huge problems. Nobody's saying that we should not recruit more police officers. That is not the solution. The first solution is take away the police officers which you have given to private individuals. And put them to the put work them that into service. Really if they secure the streets, those private individuals will have nothing to worry about. Not at all. Yes. But when you take, it, take them away, because each of those officers attached to one person is 75,000 naira per officer that they pay to Nigerian police force. The police officers are being paid by public world. Now, if you multiply that by over 150 to 180,000 police officers doing VIP duty, you can see where the problem is. Okay, there, if, 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 if you, you've highlighted so many issues, we'll try and take them as much as we can in the space of time that we have. But I want to ask the question, Nigerian police are underpaid, under-equipped, they're still on the road collecting um, what's the local parlance where it's roja, that's the right <laughs> word we use for it. Yeah. Uh, so many other, um, we still have police officers who misbehave while they're on duty and all of that. The police seem to have a bad rep. So who are these people that still want to go into a system that is corrupt? There's no job in the country. <laughs> Unemployment. There's uh, let, high... let, let's, let's okay, let me leave it to the board. Yeah. Yes. The last uh, recruitment they did was about six months ago when they said they opened the portal. They said they within for 24 hours about 700 people have applied. They said at the stage the portal collapsed because of the traffic that went into it. One, uh, because of be, because if you want to be a policeman, it is something that is built in you to be a successful policeman. But it's one where you have people going to the police because there is no other alternative. And then we have some people that, that go into the police with the sole aim of furthering their criminal activities. Examples abound. We saw, we saw it where they were doing a personal parade, and they discovered one of the police guys that was doing the part, taking part, was actually somebody who 
escaped from the prison some years back because there was no proper check that was carried out before he was selected. So you have people going into the police not because they have that love for the job, but it's because there's no other thing for the guy to do. And then maybe he has seen a policeman living around that is driving a big car and he knows that, like you call it, Roja is the main source of uh, uh, revenue for the guy. So, but the point you are looking at is, let me just quit digress a little into the issue of the PSC, the Police Service Commission, and the IG. And that is why our country is like this. We go into a needless ego issue. The question is very, very clear. Who is expected or supposed to recruit policemen? It is there in the fifth schedule, the third schedule, sorry, section 15 to 19. It is probably the section 15, rather. It is the, purely the duty of the PSC. Except the IG, that is the only person they cannot employ or, or disgrace. So I don't know the issue of dragging between the IG and the PSC over who should recruit. That is because Nigeria is our country. That is who we are. So the issue is we have to address this issue from the fundamentals. The, in the process of recruitment, the people that are coming in, are we doing the due diligence, proper check to know the type yeah, of person you are bringing in. That is why we have a situation where some policemen will be loading out their gun, loading in, in, in bracket. Their ammunition to arm robbers to go and operate. After the operation, they return it, they give the person money. That is why you have, hear a lot of bad stories or bad news about the police. You mentioned the uh, poor image of the police. It is not because Nigerians don't like them. Nigerians always want to embrace them, but the attitude of an average Nigerian policeman. We have very fantastic police officers, no doubt. And when you come across some police officer in Nigeria, you'll be asking yourself, are these people in Nigeria? They are fantastic guys. When they work, they can, they can work. We, we see we the way Nigerian police bust some crime, you know that these guys can work. But what are the things that are inhibiting them from carrying out responsibility? He mentioned the age of salary, poor funding, poor remuneration, no motivation. A policeman will get involved in a serious accident or in the course of discharging responsibility, something happened to him. Within one week, two weeks, you'll be asking members of the family to vacate the, the barracks. Those are the things that are making these guys to always make hay while sun shines. Well, we're talking about barracks and infrastructure, the Minister of Police Affairs mm -hmm. says um, he's heard this over and over again that he will try and do something. We've had ministers of police affairs come and go. Do you expect anything, any real change? Let's not even take a whole lot of issues. Let's look at the barracks. The okay. one just on the island here is an eyesore to say the least, not to talk of other parts uh, of the country. Do you see any change by this minister? To be honest with you, I don't. I've heard it time and time again. I, upon, I was born in Lagos and I grew up in a police barrack. I cannot remember my dad was, went for the Civil War and we ended up in the police barracks in Ekmori. Before they built the National Theater, we were living there. That police barrack till today has never been refurbished. Okay. It is still the same police barrack that I grew up in. <laughs> At that time, it was good. It was good, very modern, and, but today, and I saw. Go to Ikeja, see the police barrack in Ikeja. At times when I go through it, you know, I am not proud to tell people that, look, I grew up in police barracks. Where does that leave us? If you no. have no faith that this, I mean, he is talking no, tough. He is no, talking about the things corruption. that corruption. If talking. you know what goes on in Nigerian police force today, you'll be amazed. Look, every year billions are voted for police welfare, for equipment, including barracks. You will not believe it. But what happens? One, you have the aspect of corruption. Two, you have the aspect of release of capital, budgetary releases. When you do a budget, say, for 100 billion, it does not mean the federal government will release the other billion. It's just a budget. At the end of the day, you will be lucky to get 40 billion. And because of that, the Nigerian police force are forced to prioritize in terms of their own needs. At the end of the day, what suffer most is the welfare of the police officers. Because those funds are not usually released to them. They are always in the budget. That's so, unfortunate reality. The, yeah, that is the reality of what we are facing today. But so there is always see, a way out. And when they are Look, there is no way out. The only way out is the political will on the part of the federal government. Let's hope it will take the president to say, I want all these issues to be addressed. 
in relation to well. police welfare, and then the Nigerian police force will prioritize the money they, uh, they receive. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for okay. coming on pleasure. the program it's tonight. It's I appreciate your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for staying with us. We'll go on a short break now for a plus package. And when we return, I'll give you my take. Stay with us. President Mohamed Buhari has presented the budget for the 2020 fiscal year to the joint session of the National Assembly. He informed the lawmakers that the federal government expected revenue of 8.155 trillion naira for the year. The president who had presented the budget described it as a budget of fiscal consolidation to strengthen Nigeria's macroeconomic environment, investing in critical infrastructure, human capital development, and enabling institutions, especially in key job creating sectors. He said the 2020 budget is based on the new VAT rate. He added that the increased revenues will be used to fund education, health, and infrastructure. The increase in budget also reflects the new national minimum wage. The public, as well as the private sectors, need a reliable budget cycle that is predictable and reliable for planning and execution of their fiscal and financial policies and programs. It is therefore necessary that the present cycle is changed to a January to December cycle. We recognize that our highest ambitions and the collective best interests of our nationhood can only be achieved when the legislature and the executive work together in pursuit of our shared ambitions. Therefore. We will make every effort in this Ninth Assembly to achieve constructive collaboration with the Executive on all matters of appropriation, implementation, and oversight. As of June 2019, federal government's actual aggregate revenue, excluding government-owned enterprises, was 2.04 trillion naira. This revenue performance is only 58 percent of the 2019 budget target due to the un underperformance of both oil and non-oil revenue sources. Specifically, oil revenues were below target by 49 percent as at June 2019. This reflects the lower than projected oil production for cost under recovery on supply of premium motor separate EMS as well as higher expenditures on pipeline security maintenance and frontier exploration. The 2020 budget is expected to accelerate the pace of our economic recovery, promote economic diversification, enhance competitiveness, and ensure social inclusion. We are optimistic of attaining higher and more inclusive GDP growth in order to achieve our objective of massive job creation and lift many of our students out of poverty. If we need any confirmation of how unnecessary 91 political parties are, we can't look too far from the last general elections, particularly the presidential and national assembly polls. Many of the approved parties had no candidates, while those that presented candidates scored abysmally low votes. Yes, our constitution allows it. People have a right to form political parties, but as many have noted, the proliferation of these parties are counterproductive to our democracy, not to mention the amount of money wasted accommodating them on the ballot, among other sundry issues. So for me, the move by the Senate Committee to bring down the number of parties is very welcome. It is hoped that they would sustain the effort and provide courageous legislative backing for sanity to be restored, however possible, to clip the wings of those who see political parties as a business venture. It's been a pleasure bringing you the program tonight. We thank you for your time and ask that you share your comments and observations on our programs via our social media platforms at Plus TV Africa. Until next time, take care and be well.